Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, research analyst from Money Markets, and joining me as he does each and every week is Green Zone Fortunes co editor Charles Sizemore. We are back with another episode of Investing with Charles. Now, today we're going to talk about something interesting. We're going to talk about asset allocation. Before we get to that, though, I do want to make sure that uh, you are checking out moneyandmarkets.com. It is your home for safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. You can check out our proprietary stock power rating system. Just go to the home page at moneyandmarkets.com. In the top right-hand corner of the website, type in any ticker or company name, and then you're going to be able to pull up uh, our stock rating and how we break down the ratings. You'll be able to see a stock chart. You'll get some fundamental data in there and any analysis that we've written on that particular stock. And it's all yours at your fingertips for free. Now let's get right into it. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about dividends. We've talked a lot about dividends versus bonds over the last couple of weeks, but I, I kind of want to get a 30,000 foot view here and talk about asset allocation. Um, and, and I guess first, Charles, I, you know, we, you hear about it, you hear about asset allocation all the time, whether you are a novice investor or an experienced institutional investor, but what exactly is it? So it's funny, you know, asset allocation does not just sound wildly exciting at first. I, my, my mental image, just like the, what it brings to mind is remember Ferris Bueller's day off and Ben Stein, the professor, just anyone, anyone, Bueller. That's, that's kind of uh, the vibe there, right? But it's actually really important. This is actually one of the fundamental uh, aspects of finance and, and really just financial planning. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that can make the difference between you retiring with a healthy, productive portfolio and retiring broke because your portfolio broke up, it like blew up. This is really you know critical to your well-being. So well, what is asset allocation? Asset allocation, in a nutshell, is arranging the pieces of your portfolio top down to get that correct mixture of risk and return. At the end of the day, that's it. Uh, finance is one of those places where you really do have alchemy. You, know, you really do have the ability to kind of make gold out of lead here in that you the parts can be worth, or sorry, the whole can be worth more than the parts. And that's really kind of where asset allocation comes into play. By diversifying correctly, you can get more return for a given level of risk, or you can get less risk for a given level of return. You're getting more like the, the total there gives you more than the sum of the parts. Now talk about how uh, diversification works into this, because I think really at the heart of asset allocation is diversification. It is. And you know, I mean, it's pretty like we all kind of have this concept of what, what is diversification? It's just not putting all of your eggs in one basket and spreading things around. And that's true. And, and that's that's part of it. But it's actually more than that. So divert like where this magic of diversification comes into play is when you have two assets that are not perfectly correlated. And in plain English, that means they just don't move exactly together. They can even move partly together, but or they can move mostly together. But so long as they don't move in lockstep, you're getting some benefit. And of course, the less in lockstep they move, the more independent they are of each other, the less correlated they are to each other, then the more that diversification helps. So uh, we're gonna geek out here for a little bit. We do have some figures to illustrate. And so in the first one, this is a hypothetical portfolio of two assets. This could be stock portfolio and a bond portfolio. It could be stock A and stock B. It can be Pokemon cards and baseball cards. It, it, it doesn't matter what these assets are. This is this more kind of big picture here. But you can see, you know, this is how diversification works. You look down at 100% uh, asset B. This is a portfolio where all of your eggs are in that one basket. Then you see 100% portfolio A, that's all of your eggs in that basket. But you'll notice it's not a straight line between the two. It, the, the line bends inward. And what you're getting there is what that's illustrating is you're getting a higher expected return while your risk, your standard deviation in, in you know, kind of technical terms is moving inwards. When you're seeing that standard deviation pulling back, that means you're taking less risk for getting a given amount of return. There is a midpoint there, or not midpoint, but like a kind of a, the turning point of the curve. That's the minimum, minimum, minimum variance. That's the lowest risk portfolio you can have for that combination. You can scale it up by adding a little bit more of asset A. You can, you know, you you can you can take more risk if you want, 
but this gives you that ability to optimize. So that's, you know, you know, and at the end of the day, you don't really have to do this. You don't have to make a chart like this on your own. You don't have to get that level of detail, but just intuitively, if you have just any two assets, whether it's, I don't know, Microsoft stock and Apple stock or, you know, bonds and the S&P 500, whatever it is, when they're when you combine a portfolio, you get that magic juice there of you, you're getting higher return for that given level of risk, or you're getting lower risk for that given level of return. So another way to illustrate this is we have you know different you know, the second chart here has different uh, different model portfolios, and in the one that looks like a straight line, that's a correlation of one. That's perfect correlation. These are two stocks that move in lockstep together your return here and your risk is simply the simple average of the two. If one uh, has an expected return of 10%, the other has an expected return of 5%, your return is seven and a half. If the, you know, the risk of one is 10, the risk of the other is five, your risk is seven and a half. It's just the average. But the less correlated they are, you see how that curve bends back. It looks like it's a like a bow and arrow, like a, the bow being pulled back, right? At a correlation of you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, it bows in a little bit. Correlation of 0.3, it bows in more. Correlation of zero, it really bows in. So that's, you know, that that's it. You get more diversification. You get more benefit there. You get more bang for your buck, the less correlated the assets in your portfolio are. That's the essence of asset allocation. That's why this stuff works. So the idea here is that if it's if if, if the if the, you have two stocks in your portfolio and they are linear, then it's kind of a it's more vanilla. However, if you have stock A and it's completely different from stock B, moves completely different, a completely different asset class, just they're wildly different. Then you've got a little bit more. I don't want to say excitement. That's really not the right word, but you have a little bit more. Nothing about this is exciting, but it is really important. <laughs> like, well, I, right. guess, I guess it is exciting when, when you know, everyone you know, their portfolio is blowing up, and yours is actually holding up better. That actually is kind of exciting, but uh, but no, and you know, you, you can do this with two stocks, but more accurately, you're going to get more diversification there if there are things that are pretty radically different. So if you have stocks, you know, particularly like a growth stock portfolio and bonds or gold or commodities, or uh, you can even get more esoteric here, short-term option strategies or whatever, you know, like something, you know, the more different it is and the less it moves with the rest of your portfolio, the more benefit you get from it. And it, that's it. I mean, like at the end of the day, that is asset allocation. So, you know, you, you, the, how, how technical you want to get here is really kind of up to you. But, you know, if, if you don't really have, you know, advanced Excel modeling skills in your repertoire, no problem. A lot of this is pretty intuitive. You, know, you can, you know, in your 401k plan, you simply buy, you don't put all of your eggs in just one growth stock, you know, one growth fund basket. You spread out between uh, stocks and bonds. And then within the stock bucket, you diversify between large caps and small caps and US stocks and foreign stocks. On the bond side, you diversify between shorter term and longer term, between uh, corporate bonds and government bonds. And doing that, it, it really does uh, reduce your risk. And it, well, it not just reduces your risk, it reduces your risk for a given level of return. So um, I guess part two of this is once you have this diversification in place, that's great active rebalancing really does help as well. So back to the just kind of simple portfolio that, you know, two asset portfolio, stocks and bonds. Let's say that uh, the stock portion just, you know, had a nasty, well, let's just say it's 2022 and your, and your stock portfolio blew up. Let's just, let's, let's just say that. But your bonds held up a little bit better, particularly if you had shorter term bonds. Well, with, 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 with proper asset allocation, your weights have now shifted so you can rebalance back to your target weight. If your target is something like 60, 40, 60% 60 stocks, 40% bonds. If because the stock portion just, you know, took a dive and you're now looking more like 50, 50 or 40, 60, you can sell off some of those bonds that held up. You can roll them into the stocks that got beaten up. And so you're sort of perpetually buying low and selling high. That's the benefit of it. Like that's you know that's part of the risk management process. 
So that, and, and that's, that's why this stuff works. And there is no universal exact science here. Everybody is different. Everybody's goals are different. Everyone's means are different. So there's really not a one size oh, fits all good, type deal for that's us. That's actually a really good point, Matt. I'm actually really glad you brought that up. So the guy that, uh, that came up with modern portfolio theory, and it's really not that modern. This stuff was the theory behind this stuff was put together in the fifties, but it was Harry Markowitz. And he was a, a data guy, a quant guy. And he was the first guy to really quantify investment portfolios like this. The thing is, you can take a good idea and you can go too far with it. This is big picture, high level stuff. The concept is you don't put your eggs all in one basket and you try to make the baskets that you've spread your eggs into as different as possible, right? That's it. All of these charts and graphs are just a nice way to illustrate what diversification does, right? The mistake you can make is trying to get too, too, too hyper-technical about it. And then at that point, you can actually end up taking more risk than you intend because if you think your portfolio is just perfectly optimized, you might be incentivized to then lever it up with some, uh, you know, some margin. You, you, can, you can get reckless, right? So it, it, is, it is important to remember that this is, it's a concept. It's a way to look at your portfolio high level to make sure you're managing your risk in a smart way. But it is a mistake to get too hyper, hyper, hyper technical. At the end of the day, anything you're doing, any investment you're making, they kind of have to pass this, the smell test, right? They have to, they have to, to be reasonable. Very good. And uh, so really, this is all just kind of an educational thing to, to share with you, you know, what asset allocation is and how important it is when you're evaluating, especially in these times that we're in with the stock market where um, it's kind of all over the map. It's it's down and then it might be up a day. The NASDAQ is up, but the S&P is down. Things are all over the place. Everything is in flux. Uh, we've got inflation, uh, heavy recession talks. The Fed is doing who knows what the Fed is doing at this point. Uh, you know, there's all <laughs> I don't think the Fed things. knows what the Fed is doing at this point. Probably not. There's all these things going on that can cause overload. But really, if you just pull back and get to the basics uh, of asset, of things like asset allocation, it will help you kind of steer your way through all this convoluted market mess that we're in. Yeah, it, it's, not, it, it's not a guarantee against loss. Like you can still take losses in a portfolio. I mean, this year, you know, stocks and bonds are both down. But what does this do? It helps you keep your losses to a minimum. It helps you have some framework for kind of quantifying the risk you're taking. It, 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 it enables you to just make some order out of the madness, right? It enables you to, exactly. to kind of take a, a dispassionate view of your portfolio and making sure you're taking a, you know, a, a roughly, you know, it's always an estimate, but you know, a, a, a reasonable amount of risk. And it helps you get through some very difficult times. And, uh, you know, in terms of, of, of things like asset allocation, uh, you know, dividends, bonds, Charles Sizemore is our guy. He is the co-editor of Greens and Fortunes. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that if you were looking for that straight guide, uh, you know, to get through these mar tough market times and to find profit both in a bear and a bull market, Greens and Fortunes is definitely the way to go. Uh, Adam O'Dell, Charles Sizemore, myself, our entire team, we work very diligently to look for these opportunities for you. We'll put a link up in the top corner there so you can uh, find out more about how you can uh, get, get to get be a part of the Green Zone Fortunes community. Uh, it's a it's a great thing. It's not an overwhelming thing. It's you know Adam Charles walk you through it very simply. Uh, they keep things on, on the straight and level, uh, and uh, you know, it makes it very simple for you to 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 turn yourself into an investing pro, if you will. But we'll put that link up top there so you can find out more. Also, check out Money markets.com it is your home for safe sound smart simple profitable investment information and uh, you can check out my my stock power daily where i take one power stock every day and tell you why it could be a possibility for your portfolio uh, and then we have so much more on there we work seven days a week to make sure we're giving you all that content so that you can find profit in your portfolio again he is charles sizemore he is the co-editor of greens on fortunes i am matt clark i'm the research analyst for money markets until next time everyone safe trading